Well, hello everyone. My name is Dar Rath and I'm the pastor at Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin, Ontario, Canada. And before I start, I wanted to mention something about these scarves that I wear. People loan me these scarves so that I can use them for Take 5. This one, for example, is sent from a lady from Scotland. And uh, so it's a beautiful scarf. And uh, some of the people I know, some of my friends loan me their scarves. I also wanted to make a note about this picture here. This was painted by my friend Linda Doran, <clears throat> and she's an artist that lives in Southampton, Ontario. And this particular picture is a picture of the, my first church, was Williamsford Church. And this is a picture of Pet Sunday. All the kids, some of the farm kids brought their pets all to, to church on Sunday. And so Linda captured that for me in this picture. You can see all the animals and all the children uh, bringing their pets to the, to the church. We had such a great time that day. Anyway, the story today is about uh, dream catchers. And so today we explore the concept of dreams, for they often play a big role in our spiritual lives. For first, however, let's look at the fascinating legend of the dream catcher, which comes to us from Native American Indian folklore and Canadian First Nations. Many believe that the night air was filled with passing dreams, good and bad. Therefore, they made dream catchers. To make a dream catcher, one starts with a hoop, and inside the hoop, one makes a web. Often feathers are added to the bottom of the hoop so they hang down. Then the dream catcher is hung either over the sleeping person or close by their head and the dream catcher must be swinging loosely for it to work. When bad dreams pass through the dream catcher, they get tangled in the web. When the sun comes up in the morning, the rays of the sun destroy the bad dreams. The good dreams, however, know how to avoid the web of the dream catcher. The good dreams know how to gently slide down the feathers and enter into the sleeping person. There are a variety of the ones that you can buy. Now, before discussing dreams, it's helpful to discuss, dis, <clears throat> distinguish between two types. One type of dream refers to the various image, thoughts, and sensations that we have while sleeping. We have no control over this type of dream. The second type of dream is often referred to as a daydream. When we have a daydream, we become lost in thought or preoccupied. When we have daydreams, we often imagine the possibility of doing something in the future. When we discuss dreams, we are primarily discussing daydreams, not nighttime dreams. Bob Coos says, it would not be wise for us to use nightmare dreams as a definite course of action for any job that we wanted to do. We receive enough clues while we are awake to make rational decisions. Isn't that true? As we continue our life journey this week, it would be a good idea to reflect on our own daydreams. What kind of dreams do we have for our future? Do you know, in our cottage, we have a huge dream catcher, which is like this. It's a big one and it has all kinds of beautiful feathers on it, etc. But we didn't hang it over the bed um, where they're saying we should. So I think maybe we'll move that dream catcher and put it over the bed so that the dreams can, any bad nightmare dreams can be caught. So that's a neat story for today. It's something I didn't know about and I hope that you enjoyed hearing about it. So blessings on your day and thanks for taking five. <laughs>